Kathy Thomas, Zach Grierson, executive chef at Journeyman's Food and Drink in Fullerton, uses his talent to create dishes that are both innovative and delicious. Today, he shares a pan-roasted branzino accompanied with vegetables and delicious beurre blanc sauce. Welcome, chef. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes. So you're, you're working with branzino today. Mm -hmm. Why do you like that particular fish? Branzino is just like a nice, mild white fish. That it's smaller fillet, so it's easier to cook at home and having to worry about, you know, cutting up a whole mm -hmm. large fillet. You know, it's, it's just a fun, simple, delicious fish. Wonderful. Let's so, get started. All right. We're just going to get started making our beurre blanc. So I'm going to get my pot going. I'm going to mince up a shallot. And, and there's part of this sauce that you can make in advance, and is it better to do part of it at the very last minute? Yeah, so you could do your reduction mm -hmm. uh, you know, ahead of time and have that ready to go, and then what you'd need to do is just you know, warm it up a little bit, because the butter should always be done as close to serving as possible. Just gonna take a little bit of butter. Salted or unsalted? Always unsalted for okay. us, you know? Uh, you can always season more, but you can't season less once it's added, mm -hmm. so. I'm just gonna get the pan on for the bronzino. Nice medium heat. Get those shallots right there, and you can hear it just start to gently sizzle. We don't want any color, just a nice mm -hmm. uh, sweating on the shallots. Mm -hmm. A little fresh crust black pepper. And some fresh thyme off the stem. Yeah, just right in there. I love the flavor of fresh thyme. Being Italian, mm -hmm. little olive oil never hurt, just for some flavor in there. That's new to me, chef. I've never put yeah. olive oil in a bare block. No, mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, you know, French chefs will probably kill me, but. It's gonna be wonderful. They'll be all right. We also have our bronzino that we're gonna go ahead and get ready to drop in the pan. So I have a wonder flour, which is like a nice pre-gelatinized flour that helps keep uh, skin crispy. I'm just gonna season it a little bit. And then also fennel pollen. But if you're all out of fennel pollen, <laughs> yeah. you can still do this dish. Absolutely. Right. I made sure to score the skin also, so mm -hmm. when we cook it, it doesn't want to buckle up. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna drop. Here. So scoring, you just cut parallel slices into the skin. Right, if you can see it here, yeah. not too deep. I'm just gonna season the flesh. I'm gonna do a little white pepper. Freshly ground as well. And then just a hint of espalette. Beautiful. Our shallots have sweated out. I'm gonna add a little white wine. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna turn the heat up and let that reduce. And do you wanna cook it down like into a glaze? Well, what they say is like um, au sec. So it's kind of like uh, reducing it down till it's almost dry. Mm -hmm. And we'll wanna look for maybe like a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of liquid left mm -hmm. over. I'm gonna let the butter go until it stops foaming a little bit. So it's gonna be slightly on the lighter golden brown side. Dust off excess flour. You wanna lay the filet away from you so anything that might splatter goes away. That's right. And then uh, to keep the fish nice and flat, just gonna gently press it. That way it gets all the skin in contact with the pan. 10, 15 seconds is good. We have a little bit of bubbling and frying of the skin, but it's not aggressively going too hard, so we're not gonna, you know, accidentally overcook the fish. So I'm just making sure that we've gotten the texture that we want, the nice color, and now we're, we can go ahead and flip. Because it's such a thin piece, turn the heat off, and then I'm gonna temper the pan with a little bit more butter ah. to bring down the temperature so the fish doesn't overcook. And you can even throw, if you like, a little bit of fresh thyme in there. So all told, you're, you're not gonna cook this more than just a few minutes. Correct. And we're gonna transfer this guy right over to a towel and just let him rest. Our reduction is just about there. And Flavors you can make and... a bear rouge. Yes. Mm -hmm, with yes. red wine. Especially, mm -hmm. you know, like if it's fall or winter and you make the bear rouge, it's the same proportions of everything that we're doing tonight, mm -hmm. just using a really nice, like, dry red. And you've got some water over here. Did you want to cook off your asparagus? Yes, so let's go ahead and season it. Make it as uh, salty as the sea. You always want to have a lot of boiling water when you're cooking veggies. I remember Julia Child actually had a branding iron that she heated up 
And she used that after she added her green beans to bring the water back to an immediate boil. Really? Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, it was good drama. Branding iron. <laughs> We're gonna start adding our butter to the beurre blanc. And now what I'm gonna do is just turn the heat down a little bit because we want the reduction to stay warm and we want the sauce to stay warm, but we don't want it to boil. That's right. Or else our sauce is gonna break. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna add all the butter at the same time. And add little by little. The proper time to add more butter is when the last ones that you added are just about to disappear. A trick I learned a while ago too, if you're grilling steaks, Mm -hmm. and you make a beurre blanc, um, you rest your steak in the beurre blanc. Ah, oh, what a good tip that is, right? Chef. That would be oh. so nice. Oh, can you imagine? At the last addition of the butter, go ahead and turn your heat off. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to taste where it is, and then we can kind of figure out where we want to season. You know, acid we have left over from the wine, how much salt we're gonna need. A Little bit of lemon juice will do you good. A little bit of white pepper. Should be good. So we have our asparagus here, and they're gonna cook quickly because they're nice and tiny. We have little green beans that we mm -hmm. also blanched mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. By the time these warm up and the asparagus is cooked, they should be just the same tenderness. Olive oil mm -hmm. with some lemon juice, and this is gonna be a little vinaigrette that we're gonna mm -hmm. toss the veggies in once they come out. And our veggies should just be right about done. Just a little bit of salt. A little bit of that fennel pollen, just for a little kick up. If you don't have fennel pollen, if you wanna get some ground fennel seed, mm -hmm. it works. It's, it's, uh, it's really strong, so a little bit goes a long mm -hmm. way. All right, so now um, we just plate it up. Cute little bed right here, just off center. Our fish that's been rested. Zipper block. Mm. Oh, pretty. Bit of olive oil. Beautiful. And that's it. It's gorgeous. Thank you. I don't know how this dish could be any better, Chef. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's Green Goddess dressing is a favorite at our house. We use it atop wedge salad or as a dip for crudite. The food processor does much of the work. Start by adding some sour cream and some mayonnaise. Now all the green goddess stuff. A whole bunch of Italian parsley. I bring it home from the market and I wiggle it back and forth in some cold water, shake it, wrap it in a paper towel, back into the bag, and it will stay beautiful and green and crisp for up to a week. In it goes. The part that you may question, some anchovy fillets, and these have been rinsed and drained, and they're ready to go. Now, they don't add fishiness to the green goddess. What they add is a depth of flavor, an umami. Some green onions. Some fresh basil leaves. Then I love buying the basil in a little plant like this. I want a little bit of salt, and then let the food processor do its magic. All right, so here's a trick when dumping things out of the food processor. Take your middle finger, stick it up, and hold that blade in place with your finger so that you don't have to worry about it falling out. You have to have some fresh tarragon. Never substitute dried tarragon for fresh. So this goes in, and then these dark green stalks from the green onion. You can leave it in the refrigerator a couple of days. And here we have our crudite platter, and there you have it. Green goddess with raw vegetables, delicious. The produce aisles are filled with so many delicious choices. Try something new, have an adventure.